Hey, welcome back to the Two Super Guys Trade Socks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And today we're going to look at, am I making the biggest mistake of my life? Is this an outrageous bet? Probably. And it's also a good example on why margin is a little bit dangerous. So we'll get started. All right. If you guys enjoy this kind of entertaining stock market content, two stupid guys trading stocks, particularly Dylan, and all things personal finance, by all means, give us a like, subscribe below. We'd love to have you along in this little adventure of us. That will get to it. Douche. Two stupid guys trading stocks. I joke, right. but this bet may make you a lot of money. Huh? I joke, but being uh, this bet may make you a lot of money. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I have uh, a lot of cash set aside that I'm waiting for uh, for a certain number to hit on the spy, but we're going to go into it. Um, so is Dylan out of his mind? Okay, let's get into what on earth I'm doing. So this is a zoomed out version of the spy. Okay. Over here is, uh, here we go, there we go, COVID. March 2020 COVID, okay? Yeah. Boom, boom, right? These red levels here, and we'll zoom in, are the levels that I've had for quite some time, noting the hesitancy and uh, strong levels of bounces. This pink level is where I am shorting with an uncomfortable amount of money to get to that uh, pink level, all right? So I am shorting the SPY, everyone, via put options. Uh, I'm going to show you everything. A full transparency here. We don't lie. You're even going to show how I'm down 30%. These green circles are where I have started or added to the short. Uh, when I initially started, I wanted to have about 10K total in put options. Now, the reason why it's so much is the length of time. It's not a ton of put options. It's length of time. Can you, you want to go to far out? Yeah, put, they're put quite leaps. far out. <laughs> leaps. Yeah. We'll do leaps. Um, so I added another one and most likely my final one at 413. This blue line, 419.83, is me saying, should I back out? This is a problem. I don't like how high it is. Okay, because at this point, it may be breaking a trend. All right. Mm, okay. I'll say it looks like it's put a couple of higher highs and lower lows kind of thing in there, or higher lows. <laughs> higher lows. It's higher when you lows. zoom out. It's not. Uh, but yeah, here's the same thing on the on the cues. Um, I have one on the cues, and my goal was to add around three twenty which is where we're at. So I only have one put on the queues right now. Um, I'm most likely going to add one more for where it's at right now. Um, I wanna move my face so you can see the volume. Mm -hmm. I really like how low the volume is. This is part of it, all right? This is part of the thing that's making me feel better about my bet. <laughs> this one I don't like. Uh, this one's a problem, not a fan. So do you see this 135, 42? Actually, before we go into this, can you talk about what TLT is? So TLT is like an inverse uh, long-term treasuries um, ETF, basically. So the whole idea is that it, as interest rates rise on like these longer-term treasuries, that it should benefit, because, or a put contract on this would benefit by prices going down. First became aware of this when Michael Burry was, uh, had some of this in his portfolio probably about, what, a year and a half ago, something like that? It's been a little while now. Yeah, I think I want to say... May 2021, second second yeah. quarter 2021. He's like since closed the position, but that's yeah. What the... So I actually shorted from. So basically, the logic here: interest rates go up, therefore yields um, have to go down. And then I'm sorry, backwards. Oh boy, um, <laughs> interest rates go up, therefore bond prices go down. So essentially, I am shorting, knowing that we have to increase rates because of where we're at. I shorted from 135 to 120. I got a lot of crap for it, to be honest. Uh, it was my most successful trade. I had a 100% return. Um, but then I thought, <laughs> why, why did I pull out so easy? Um, That's what show. she said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why did I do that? Because uh, they have to keep increasing more. Now, the interesting thing that's happening, and I'm going to be honest, I don't understand why. 
is every time there is now a rate increase, the bond also goes up. And for the life of me, I can't figure it out. But it's like yeah. clockwork. Every single time they do it, it is on these big uh, white bars that are, that are going straight up. Doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, yeah, not feeling this one. We're going to have to see what happens here. Um, yeah. It technically has not broken trend to like 122, so I'm chilling. Okay. Yeah, I mean, definitely a little interesting and uh, makes you a little leery. But the, I think the idea might be that it might be a little bit of a flight to safety because now you're getting people buying the bonds because they're trying to protect their money in case of like a long you know, recession kind of sets in. Like That's my counter argument to why this might be going on. But um, I, that's just a, a theory. But True. Um, let's get into what I actually have here. So okay. I, these are multiple positions. It's really only two. It's just different timelines. So if we go up here, uh, this is a uh, Q put with a expiration 2023. This one, uh, SPY put 2023. Uh, the TLT is uh, June 2023. And then I have two SPY puts for 2024, which is quite a long time out. All right? Yeah. So here's where I'm at. So my total short is 14528 I am down 3,000 of that position. Um, my current plan is I wanna reevaluate at those drawn levels and possibly close TLT if it breaks trend. Um, <laughs> my TLT goal is 101, which I believe okay. was 2018 levels, 2017 levels. Interesting. Around there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, aggressive, but I, I guess yeah, you're on the chart is uh, if it makes sense on this on that, um, but it, that's uh, it's, it's a bold move, Cotton. But let's see if it pays off for him. I guess it's a bold move, Cotton. <laughs> you think that's a lot, Vinny? You think it's too much? I uh, no, I honestly, I I think it's it's reasonable. Um, I, I'd be curious to see how it plays out for you, but you know, like, definitely based on on everything I'm reading as far as like numbers wise, it, it gives me a, a bearish bias for the uh, short to kind of medium term. Um, which I why is why I've been kind of flummoxed by this this market rally throughout the summertime here. But I, I've I've you know talked about the historical data on October being a pretty bad month. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll so see October is part of my plan. If it's hanging out in between um, zones where I'm buying or selling or I don't know what to do and it's in a decision zone and it's end of October, I may pull out for a little bit because I would have expected it to drop by end of October. Okay. Yeah, All right. Interesting. We should probably do a separate video about the October crashes. That would be worth doing. Yeah, there's like a weird amount. All right, guys. Yeah. Hopefully uh, I don't jump off a bridge. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah, catch you on the next one.